Football fans, we are back here for SportsRecall.com at Tarzana, California at Valley Sports Cards and Picture Framing. Talking today with Derek Ward of the Super Bowl champion New York Giants from Super Bowl 42. He's going to tell us a little bit about football and even a little bit about Hollywood. I can't wait, so let's see what he has to say. SportsRecall.com. What's up, everybody? It is your host, Kareem, and we are back out here in Tarzana hanging out with not just NFL's player, but Super Bowl champion. Let me make sure to get that in there. Derek Ward taking yes, some time out today to meet some fans and sign some autographs. Yes, sir. Appreciate that. Now, a lot of things have gone on from the time, you know, let's we'll say today to, you know, really when sports started yeah. for you. We're going to try to take it all the way back. Okay. But just look at, you know, when you were a kid. Was it always just football only for you? What what sports did you play growing up? Well, I, I played everything. I played football, basketball, baseball, ran track. But um, my, my thing was just football. You know, growing up in South Central L.A., L.A. Raiders, you know, Bo Jackson was my favorite uh, player. So I just tried to emulate my game after him. Right, you're talking about Bo Knows, and now I know why you were into all the sports. Exactly. So I always wanted to be like Bo Jackson. He was my hero growing up. So, um, you know, I, I, I hope I did him a little bit proud playing in the NFL, winning the Super Bowl. Got it. Now, outside of Bo Jackson, maybe some of your favorite athletes in other sports? Um, you know, I'm, I'm a big Laker fan, so Kobe's my guy. Um, I also uh, love the Dodgers. You know, Kershaw, he's always a, a baller pitching the ball. Um, I, I'm... I'm not really into, um, you know, golf or, you know, soccer or anything like that. But it's, it's mainly for me is baseball, basketball, and football. Okay. Now, obviously, you were all over the place. You're running track. You're doing this as a kid. How old were you when you thought that, you know what, there might be a future for me in football? Or maybe it's time for me to start, you know, spending more time in football and less time in the other sports. It was literally pretty early, like back in 88. I'm old, yeah. <laughs> But uh, back in 1988, I was eight years old, and um, I just knew, um, you know, playing football in the backyard. I remember catching a one-handed pass from my uncle, and he just stopped, and his jaw just dropped. He's like, yeah, you're playing football. So that was it for me. Okay, now any encouragement you got from, like, football coaches growing up to where they said, you know, you, you really need to make sure you stick with this? Yeah, um, I, from all my coaches growing up, but I, I was I was kind of a knucklehead growing up. You know, you, you, you kind of – you kind of blend in with your surroundings. I grew up in South Central LA, so, you know, growing up there, you have to be tough. You have to, you know, blend in. So that's what I did. Um, but I was a knucklehead, and uh, everybody told me, they were like, you know what, if you just relax and play football and concentrate in school, you'll be able to make it. And, um, you know, I, I just, I was like, you know what, let me try it, and we're here now. Okay, so talking about growing up as a, a knucklehead, yeah. we won't have to get into too many specifics, <laughs> but, you know, was that, I guess, maybe more kind of your time in high school, just because, you know, they always say, you know, growing up, trouble's around every corner. Yeah, you, you well, for me, I, I found myself in high school. That's when I knew I really wanted to pursue football as a career, um, you know, and I, you know, I've always been the best person on my team, um, but being in high school, uh, you know, uh, having my teachers say, you know, if you don't make it, you're going to be a loser. You're going to, you know, you probably won't make it to be 21. That gave me motivation to, to make it. So, um, and that's what I did. I just, I just put all those, uh, those factors into my motivation and I made it. Right, right. Now, got through high school. Obviously, college started off at Fresno State yeah. as one of the Bulldogs. Yes, sir. Fresno State. Um, freshman All-American, you know, I uh, balled out, had a lot of injuries though when I went to Fresno and, um, it, you know, it, it didn't work out so uh, I transferred to a, a small NAIA school in the heartland of Kansas, uh, Ottawa University, and um, I, I uh, played one year there, uh, rushed for like 2,000 yards, it was just, re my stats were ridiculous and um, I actually got drafted out of Ottawa. Right. now. There's one question I wanted to ask you about that. A lot of people think if you're going to make it to the pros, you have to go to, you know, people yeah. talk about the football schools. Well, yeah. if Michigan and USC and Florida State, if those guys aren't recruiting you, did, but, you know, obviously you're proof that you don't have to be at one of those types of schools. Exactly. The, see, the, the, the thing people need to realize is the core of an NFL team is basically, you know, those 
those small school guys, the guys that got drafted in the later rounds. That's what makes the core of an NFL team. That's what makes you get to that next level, which is the Super Bowl. Um, so, I mean, it's it's cool to to go to a big school to have the, that notoriety, but you can make it playing at a friggin' NA high school like I did. Mm -hmm. I got drafted. I got drafted in the seventh round. I was like 15 picks away from Mr. Irrelevant, and besides one other running back my draft year, I outlasted all of them. Okay. So again, kind of taking maybe the same way those teachers motivated you exactly. with that late draft status, you said now you're going to prove some people wrong. Exactly. I, and, and that's what I set out to do. I, I, um, you know, when I got to the NFL, I just like, you know, I'm, it, it, it's, you see so many people come in and out of like, just, it's like a revolving door in the NFL. One, one day you'll see somebody, you'll, you'll become friends with them. The next day they're gone. So to be able to, to stick with the team, you have to do all the small things. And that's what I did. Um, and I knew I wasn't going to get on the field. Tiki Barber was the starter. So I, I played behind him for three years, and I did my job uh, well. I was excellent at my job, which was special teams, mm -hmm. and to spell Tiki from, you know, time to time when he needed a break. So I excelled at that for my first three years, and then after he retired, I got a bigger role in the offense, and then I just took advantage of that. Now, talking about Tiki Barber, being his backup, that's not a bad running back to learn from. I mean, oh. you're able to look at him every day, study him. What do you think was, was probably some of the best things you got just watching him work and the way he went about his job? Just him being a professional on and off the field, um, especially in the classroom. Uh, Tiki was a, a, a studier. Like, he, he just he loved, he loved the game of football. So if you love the game of football, you got to know the game of football. And he knew – everything when I got to the NFL like I, I thought I knew defenses I thought I, I could recognize coverages but I didn't know anything compared to what he knew so being playing behind him for three years learning from him seeing how he studied seeing how he watched film um, seeing how he broke down film it just motivated me to become the person well not the person but the player that that he was mm -hmm. now being with the New York Giants, like it didn't matter really whether you're with the Giants, no matter what team. The goal as an NFL player is to hopefully one day get to that Super Bowl, yeah. to be able to say you got the Super Bowl ring, which you did yeah. in Super Bowl 42. Mm -hmm. It's what you dream about since you were eight years old yeah. with your uncle in the backyard. It's what you're working for in the classroom, in the weight room, on the practice field. But when it, it actually happened, like, let's let's take it back to the night before the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Did you really feel like, all right, this is going to happen? Or was it kind of a, I can't believe I'm here? <laughs> yeah, it's a, I can't believe I'm here type of thing. Um, you know, it, it's every it's every football player's dream to play in the NFL. Um, and it's every, fo it's every football player's dream to win a Super Bowl. Um, there's been a lot of great players that never even got to the Super Bowl, much less win a Super Bowl. So to be able to win one and to know that I contributed throughout the season to help my team win the Super Bowl, it was, um, it was pretty satisfying. And no doubt, you know, has to be. Now, we talked to one of your teammates, Steve Smith, mm -hmm. also on the offense with you, about his Super Bowl ring. Mm -hmm. He said he keeps his under, you know, it, it's in a safe yeah. that not even his brother even knows where the safe yeah. is. <laughs> is. Is yours under lock and key? Mine is actually, and it's funny, I, I tried to get it out here. Mine's, mine is still in New York. It's yeah, it's in a um, it's in my bank uh, safe deposit box. So I tried to get it out here, but I couldn't make it on time. Oh, okay, well no, at least you didn't tell me like it's it's hidden in a cereal no, box no, somewhere no, no, no. in in your auntie's house. I, I literally I haven't seen it in like three years. That's how long it's been. So it, yeah, it's it's uh, put away. I mean, it's too gaudy to just walk around and wear. It. And especially you know, L.A. You never know somebody might try to get you, but <laughs> <laughs> don't want to attract the wrong tail. You know, exactly. just because you're not a knucklehead anymore. Or doesn't mean the rest of them still aren't out there. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's just too big to wear around. Um, but, you know, every time I go to New York, I'll take it out and, you know, look at it, just remnants. D did you ever wear it? I mean, even once, just, you know, um, to maybe a meeting or a dinner or something? Yeah, I I've probably worn it like three times. Okay. Three times. Um, one was when we first got it, when we got it from Tiffany's, and then uh, out to a dinner and then out to, like, a charity event. But after that, it was just... Like, you know, let me just put it away and, and, you know, keep it until my son grows up so he can have something. Yeah, no, I I, I could definitely see you kind of opening the box, looking at it, laughing. Yeah. You it, close the box. Yeah, yeah. It, it's pretty it's pretty cool when you can open up a box and see one. You have a Super Bowl ring, a world championship ring. So, um, like I said, Dan Marino doesn't even have a Super Bowl ring. So, it's pretty it's pretty cool to, to have one. Without a doubt. Now, 
moving from like you said you start off back up special teams getting more of a role in the offense you're talking about you know the Giants in that Super Bowl run mm -hmm. you know people wanted to call it running back by committee or whatever yeah. you were part of what they called earth wind and fire mm -hmm. where you had Brandon Jacobs and Ahmad Bradshaw with you as earth and fire yeah. you be in the wind mm -hmm. what would you say is that just kind of how they describe the running styles um yeah it, it pretty much was uh for example uh BJ he's uh, Brandon Jacobs he's 6'4 280 so obviously he's big and we called him earth Get out the way. Get out the way. You, you you get in front of him, and you're gonna get level. That's Charles Woodson and Leron Landry. <laughs> um, and then Ahmad, he's called a uh, fire because he's just like a spark plug. Like he just, he, he, like his feet never stops moving. He he'll just take off, and he's liable to go 80, 90 yards uh, every time he touches the ball. And then me, they called me win because I, I was more, you know, I'm, I'm LA. I'm I'm cool I'm breezy I, I, I shoot through the holes I, I make people miss um I could catch the ball so um we put it all together and we got earth wind and fire right now I used to work with a dude that looked just like Maurice White from earth wind and fire <laughs> he's from Chicago too shout out to Donnie uh would you think of like an earth wind and fire song to kind of describe that season for you uh yeah this question was uh came up before um uh, I forgot the name of it I was like, do you mind? Oh, okay. <laughs> if I touch, if I eat, if I... We're yeah, going the slow jam route. You hear that, Donnie? Yeah, it's a little uh, Love's Holiday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, the funny thing is we we did a a, a piece for uh, ESPN, and uh, they actually sung, Earth Wind, they ha actually had Earth, Wind & Fire come on and sing while we did our highlights um, for the show, so it was pretty cool. Hey, between... You know, talk about the things that happen when you win it all. Getting a Super Bowl ring and getting Earth, Wind, and Fire to perform for you. Man. Yeah, it, 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 life is good, you know. <laughs> life is good. All right, everybody, at Sports Recall. We are back here with Derek Ward. Now, if you needed any further proof that Derek Ward is winning at life, it's hard enough. I mean, like you said, a lot of players grow up playing football with the dream of getting to the NFL and don't make it. You did that. Mm -hmm. A lot of NFL players... Every last NFL player has a dream of winning the Super Bowl. A lot of them don't get to that. You accomplished that. Yeah. So after doing these two things, you decided you're going to go for the trifecta and get into another career that a lot of people want to do or think they should be doing and just can't find a way to get their foot in the door. Writing for TVs and movies in Hollywood, working on scripts. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's always been a, a, a dream of mine to uh, write. I've always been a good writer. Um, and I always, I always used to love to tell stories. So I, I put those two things together and um, it, it just started to flow, you know, writing scripts, um, um, you know, doing uh, shorts, t um, movie shorts and all that. So um, now I'm, I'm able to actually say I work for Warner Brothers and, and as a production assistant and writer on uh, the lot. So it's, it's pretty cool to, you know, be on set every day seeing, you know, the, how the actors, uh, how they go about doing their jobs and everybody else that comes with, uh, you know, making the whole team work. Um, it, it's pretty much like football. You know, you have a team of people that needs to get the job done to be able to have another season of a show or, or you know, have a movie make, you know, 50, 60 million dollars opening weekend. So um, it's it's pretty uh, it's pretty cool to, to be in that uh, world now. Now, did you have a hard time from them? I mean, did they look at you and just see as, oh, this is a guy that used to put on a helmet and pads. You know, now you're, like you said, writing, using your brain to get the job done. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's always skepticism when they when you see a, a NFL player coming from the NFL to Hollywood. And it's so cliche, I guess you can say, but um, I'm not trying to be in front of the camera. I'm trying to be in back of the camera, you know, writing, producing, uh, hopefully maybe even directing someday. So um, it's all a process. It's just like, you know, getting to the NFL. You know, you start, you got to start from the bottom and work your, work your way up. And uh, that's what I'm doing right now. Got it, got it. Now, looking at everything you're doing now in Hollywood, everything you've been able to do with football and everywhere else, all the stuff that you've accomplished, what what would you say is at the at the top of that list for now? All the stuff that I've accomplished so far to date. Um, I mean, it, it's it's obviously the NFL right now. Um, you know, just playing for as long as I did, and then winning the Super Bowl, and and then um, you know, just being able to share that with my friends and family. 
Um, and then now I'm trying to transition into Hollywood and, and you know, have a, a big career in that. So, um, you know, it, it worked once. Hopefully it'll work twice for me. Now, would you be able to have those director credits when the credits roll? Would that be like the, the Super Bowl of Hollywood for you personally? Exactly. To see my name, uh, you know, in the credits and, and, you know, as a writer, director, producer, that'll that'll be a, another like, wow. Just like when I see my Super Bowl ring, I'll be like, wow. Um, it'll be sort of the same thing. Now, for anybody wanting to get, you know, into professional sports or, or even Hollywood, you know, somebody, a young person coming up to you asking for advice on how to be a professional, what's the best advice you could give them? Just uh, believe in yourself. Don't don't ever think that you can't do something because you can. I, um, if I were to listen to people, everybody who said I couldn't make it to the NFL, I would have never made it. So. Um, I, I just, uh, you know, I, I just closed my ears to the to the BS and I just uh, went after it. I knew I, I had a long shot from getting drafted in the seventh round, but I was like, you know what, if I get drafted or even if I was a, 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 a rookie free agent, um, I was going to make the team. And, and that's what I did. I just worked hard, um, concentrated on doing what I had to do, and, and I made it. Got it, got it. Now... Whether it's football or now, do you have any superstitions, any good luck charms, things that you do that, that you think uh, work for you? Um, I didn't really have any superstitions in um, in football. I mean, well, I, I, I'll take that back. I probably have one. It's like uh, if I if I had a good game, I wouldn't change my cleats the next game. I'd wear the same cleats for until I had a bad game, and then I'd change them. But that's pretty much it. I, I'm, I really wasn't a big superstition guy. Okay. Out of everybody that you have got to meet, other celebrities, who's who's been the person you were most excited that you got to meet so far? Oh, wow. Um, hmm. I'd have to say Oprah Winfrey. Got to meet Oprah. Yeah, I met Oprah Winfrey in New York uh, at a charity event, um, and I was just like a <laughs> I was just like a starstruck groovy <laughs> <laughs> it's like you can be honest about yeah, that I mean I love Oprah Oprah's been on my TV since I was five years old so you know to be able to meet Oprah and 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 to uh, have a conversation with her and you know just about life and um, telling me good luck and, and my future endeavors and all that stuff it was pretty cool okay now, out of everybody that maybe you'd still want to meet, if there's anybody on the wish list, celebrities that, you know, you could go have a short conversation with them, who would you bump into? Probably uh, Barack Obama, president. I I'd love to meet him. He seems pretty cool, seems pretty laid back, so I I'd love to... Uh you know, have a conversation with him of just about anything. Well, the good thing is, if you ever, you know, run into Oprah, she might be able to introduce exactly. it to you. Yeah, they're like best friends, right? So <laughs> Oprah Oprah gets in with the with the, the cool kids group. So yeah, hopefully. Got it, got it. Now, uh, as far as the football season, we know that you still keep your eye on the NFL. Yeah. Who do you like as far as uh, the Super Bowl coming up this year? Whose chances? Wow. Um, it, it's kind of wide open this year. There's a lot of good free agent pickups um, by teams. Um, I know New York did pretty well in free agency. Um, and I, I know they got Coach Spags back on the defensive side. So hopefully if he could turn that defense around, I think they have a chance of, of making some noise in the playoff. But, you know, you got your, your normal teams like the Seahawks and the Patriots and the Broncos should be um, back back up there and in Indianapolis. Did some pretty nice things in the off season uh, with my former teammate Andre Johnson. So uh, it's, it's going to be pretty cool. It's going to be pretty exciting this year. Yeah, no, definitely. And one of the reasons, you know, why I watch the NFL, why everybody watches the NFL, uh, things can change, and yeah, it's so much yeah. in just one season. Exactly. Um, you you never know. You just never know. You may think that you have the team that's going to win the Super Bowl in the off season, and you wind up horrible, or you, you may think you have a horrible team in the in the off season. And wind up winning the Super Bowl like we did. We thought we were horrible in 2007. We started off 0-2, and, um, and we 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 were giving up 40 points a game, those two games. And then we went on a run, and and then we went on another run in the playoffs, and we won the Super Bowl. So you just never know in the NFL. Got it. Now speaking of the NFL and speaking of New York in particular, I had a whole lot of people from New York reach out to us on Reddit. So we're going to go through some questions that they had for you. Okay. Uh, first up, we got Al from New York City. 
he wants to know what your favorite memory as a giant was. Uh, my favorite memory as a giant was probably uh, when I got the thousand yards rushing versus Minnesota and uh, myself and Brendan Jacobs became a uh, thousand yard backs in the same season. I think it was only done like four times before us. So to be able to do that with uh, one of my closest friends on the team it was pretty special. Right, and, and they say it's a passing league, right? Yeah, and they say it's a passing league. And we, I think we rushed for almost close to 3,000 yards that season. So it was pretty, pretty amazing. Nice, nice. Next up from New York, we got Andrew from Manhattan. Uh, says, Andre Williams has a very similar running style to yours. How do you evaluate his potential? Where do you think he might need to improve the most? Um, he his the potential is through the roof for him. You know, uh, to be to to do what he did as a rookie last year was pretty impressive. Um, the one thing that I would say that he would probably need to work on a little bit more is uh, just ball security um, and blitz pickup. You know, uh, to be able to protect Eli when you have a blitzing linebacker or a safety coming from from deep or you know a a, a cornerback coming from the wide receiver spot. So. Um, to be able to, to, to help in that um, aspect of, of the offense is, uh, is valuable. That's what, that's what got me to play for so long, but to be able to, to pick up you know, the blitzes and, and line, blitzing linebackers and all those other things and, and actually be a, a six lineman for um, Eli when he dropped back the pass because um, you would also need to help chip the DNs back onto the tackles if they, you know, if they show color. So. Um, just to be able to do those things, you know, just be an all-around athlete, not just a runner. Got you. Now, last question we got, uh, another somebody from New York City. I'm thinking this might be one of your boys because he didn't even write Derek. He just referred to you as D. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, James from NYC just want to say, D, why were you so good on third down? Oh, man, it was just, uh, I don't know. Um, I was able to – third down is either – you're either going to run the ball or you're either going to pass the ball. You, you're, they're going to blitz or they're going to drop back in the zone. So we we did a lot of cat and mouse games with defenses when I was on the field. Um, like the first half, I would probably just uh, pick up the blitz or, or stay in and, and not go out in the route. And then the second half, we'd turn around and we'd run the ball. So you never knew what we were going to do. And that, caught, that kept the defense at bay. Um, they didn't know whether the blitz or whether to drop back in the zone. So I was able to take advantage of that and, uh, you know, work my magic. Got it, got it. Thank you, everybody from New York. Uh, other cities will just have to get to y'all next time. <laughs> uh, we're going to do the, the little kind of what we call the rapid fire section now, Derek. We're just going to okay. go over some of your favorites. All right. All right. So easy enough. Uh, favorite car, either that you've had or that you want to buy? Uh... Well, I pretty much had a lot, a lot of cars. Um, Bentley. Okay. Yeah, Bentley GT. Yeah. Can't go wrong with that. Can't go wrong with that. <laughs> Favorite type of food? Um, I love uh, I love every food. I'm <laughs> <laughs> I just love food. <laughs> Simple enough. We'll leave that right there. <laughs> uh, favorite artist? You know, uh, musical artist. Favorite musical artist right now? Um. Mm. Let me go back in the day. I mean, let's let's go with uh, like Boys to Men. Okay, okay. They group. they got the album sales to prove it. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> favorite movie. Favorite movie is uh, Shawshank Redemption. Favorite time of year is Christmas. Love Christmas. You know, it's it's a uh, it's a family holiday, um, and my kids love it. So it just makes me it makes me happy to see them happy. So especially when they're opening their presents and. You know, thank you, Daddy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I always wanted this. And they're only six and three talking about they always wanted this. <laughs> so it's pretty cool to see that. Got it. Now, you talked a little bit about what you would do with your cleats when you were playing, but when you were off the field, your favorite type of shoe or your favorite sneaker to wear when you weren't playing ball? When I weren't playing ball, um, Nikes. You know, I'm, I've always been a Nike guy. Um, my first two years in the NFL, I played with Reebok, but it just didn't fit my feet well. So... Um, I've changed over to Nike and just been a Nike guy ever since. Got it. Next up, favorite video game. Were you much of a gamer? Back in the 80s and 90s. <laughs> All right, we'll go old school. Favorite favorite arcade game, the stand-up machine. <laughs> My favorite video game of all time is Tecmo Bowl. Like, if you didn't like Tecmo Bowl growing up in the 80s and 90s, you just... 
Yeah. Something was wrong. Exactly. So Tech Mobile was my uh, that was my game of choice. Got it. And then last but not least, a favorite uh, motto or favorite saying, whether it's a, a piece of advice or a, a quote that you like to kind of refer to. Um, hmm, that's a good one. Um, it can be yours too. Something that you might have told somebody else. <laughs> just uh, you know, just just believe in yourself. That's a, that's pretty much what I what I base my life on is just believing in myself um, and not worrying about the naysayers. You know, like I said, if you, you if you listen to them, then nine times out of ten, you probably will be what they think that you are. So uh, just take advantage of every opportunity you have and uh, just go for it. Hey, I couldn't have said it any better myself. So Derek, again, thank you for, for taking the time. Thank you. And if you, you know, while we're going out, if you could let everybody know how they can get in touch with you. We know you're real yeah. active on social media, you know, how they can uh, look you up. Yeah, you can uh, reach me at um, Derek Ward 32 on Twitter and um, at, yeah, just on Twitter, Derek Ward 32. Twitter. You don't need to be on all that other stuff. Yeah, yeah, that, that's pretty much where I, I do my social media at. So, uh, yeah, reach me there. Got it, got it. Well, there it is, Sports Recall. Once again, another Super Bowl champion. It's been fun. Until the next time, you can check us out, www.sportsrecall.com.